today at Accra International Conference Center, the Honorable Minister for Education, Dr. Yao Osei Odijum, who will deliver an address on the state of Ghana's education system. And you are watching it on Ghana's official high school TV channel, High School Plat TV. The education system is very good, especially the free education which has really helped us, especially those who are poor, those who don't have that privilege. We thank God that this system really came up. Now one where they are expecting to hear from the minister today. Well, we need facilities, infrastructure, that is it. The, the state of our education, to my understanding and my perspective, is the fact that it has imbued a certain ideology in the student system. Today we are going to paint evidence that are contrary to the general projections and to show how Ghana is leading the charge in the sub-region and how Ghana is standing tall in, on this continent in key areas which I will not go into specificity but soon we will have the Minister for Education Dr. Ayah Osedichum giving us evidence-based and, and, and a very credible presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome our dynamic and ever ambitious Minister for Education, the erudite, the Honorable Dr. Yao Osei Edutu. A round of applause, please. It's a great honor to be here this morning. We have the opportunity to tell the Nana Dodanko Kufuadu story in education transformation. We want to make sure that this nation's fortunes change for the better. Great strides have been made. We may not be where we want to be, but we are not where we used to be. And that evidence will be shown today. The Ministry of Education has been driving a transformative agenda to reshape Ghana's education system, aiming to develop assertive and empowered learners, equip true essential skills to enhance social economic development. Significant achievements have been made in this pursuit. Today, at Accra International Conference Center, the Honorable Minister for Education, Dr. Yao Osei Odijum, will deliver an address on the state of Ghana's education system. These will highlight the progress of ongoing projects and future plans to enhance quality education and accessibility. My name is Nana Echame and you are watching it on Ghana's official high school TV channel, High School Plat TV. Follow us on all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook and on YouTube, High School Plat TV. Viewer at home, stay glued to your screens for more updates. And this, we are here at Accra International Conference Center for the Minister's Delivery on the State of Ghana's Education System. And you are watching it on High School Platinum, the official High School TV channel. How are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling very excited. Expecting to hear from the Minister today. I'm expecting to hear ways they can make our school system better and ways that they can help us, give us ideas to nurture our dreams and talents. Um, what are you expecting, Anya? I'm expecting more change, more improvement in terms of every sphere of the educational sector. Um, teacher, I want to find out from you. Being a teacher, how is the education system treating you? And do you have any recommendations? Okay. Um, I should say that, um, you know, in a few, some years back, at least um, we could go for vacations, maybe a month or five weeks, six weeks. So teachers were able to have ample rest. But um, of late, what we've realized is that when uh, school is in session, it runs throughout the year. So if uh, possible, what we need now is some rest, like at least for the time you go on break for a short period because we are running the um some will go home and then the track system
some schools are not into that, but we are running the track system. So throughout the year, we are supposed to be in school and teach. So we need some um, rest to go and some races. All right. Understand you because you know all work and no play makes Jack a dog. Thank you so much and enjoy yourself today. Today we'll be listening to the Minister of Education who will be giving us a speech on the state of Ghana's education system. And I have here with me students of Nungwa Senior High. Hi, students. Good morning. All right, let me find out from you, my lady. How is the environment treating you so far? You've seen from other schools, you've seen the security services, you've seen the media and all of that. How is the environment treating you so far? Very good. They have been very friendly so far and I would say our stay so far has been great. Uh, gentlemen, uh, Minister is there to talk to us about the state of Ghana's education system and project to us the future plans that he and his team has for us. So far, how is the education system treating you? You've been in for a while. What from you? From two. Okay, so at least you know a bit about it. How is it treating you so far? So far, so good. I'll say that um, ever since we came to New Senior High School, we've been having special time with teachers and then with our friends. So, but for our food um, side to it's only it's also good so I'll say that um, so far so good and my lady teacher you look nice by the way I want to find out from you being a teacher how is the system treating you okay. so far so good everything is okay um, but we have a lot of I mean, some challenges that we think today if the minister come he will address it and I think the challenges and not only for Nungwa Senior High School, but most of the schools. Yes. What is that one where they are expecting to hear from the minister today? Well, we need facilities, infrastructure. That is it. Yes. Thank you so much. And thank you, students, for joining me. Have the best day. The erudite minister for education, Dr. Yavse Duchum, the chief director, Mrs. Mamle Andrews, the country director of UNESCO, our development partners, Nananom, Nime, Name, heads of agencies at Ministry of Education, our directors, our teachers, our gallant men and women, members of the noble profession, our brilliant and talented students, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to be here on behalf of Dr. Osedu Chum, the Minister for Education, to welcome you all to this great platform, Address on the State of Education in Ghana, an opportunity to present the great strides and a massive transformation in education that has swept across the entire country. An opportunity for us to take stock, an opportunity for us to recognize the collective efforts that all of us as a country and as a nation, for the past seven years, we've been able to champion on the front of education. There are many narratives that some others may want you to see, but today you are going to have the true picture and have the full picture of the great transformation that we have seen across. The past seven years has seen massive investment into education. And I've had the privilege of joining the ministry this past three and a half years. And I've had the opportunity of working with a fantastic and visionary minister, Dr. Yaose Educhum, and who to him, the passion and the drive to make sure that education is done the 21st century way. And every child is given the opportunity and supported to realize their dream and empowered to be able to meaningfully contribute to education is very much on his shoulders. He has led the charge. The vision of His Excellency the President Anado Danko Kufado and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia have resonated very well with the Minister for Education. And he has led all of us at Ministry of Education and agencies together with our development partners to ensure that we put in heavy investment, investment that is creditable, an investment that is making transformations in every community, in households, and at the aggregate level as a country, repositioning our education system to be responsive in a way that will empower the critical mass of our people to have the skills to make a difference both at home and abroad. The past years, we've seen great initiatives that have tackled every aspect of our education system right from pre-primary, primary, GHS, SHS, TVETs, and tertiary, even to encompass complementary education. And so today, we are going to witness 
the massive transformation that we all have contributed with Dr. Yaose Duchum leading the charge. And we all are going to be able to be proud to celebrate what we have been able to achieve as a country. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are all aware and fully appreciate, no country can meaningfully develop without the meaningful role of education. Regardless natural resources and endowments, regardless oil, gold, diamonds, and timber that may be found in any particular country, the only surest way to be on a path of rapid socioeconomic development is to invest and invest rightly into education. There have been locations where World Bank, UNESCO have had some projections on certain key aspects of education outcomes for the entire sub-region and for low-income countries. Today, we are going to pitch evidence that are contrary to the general projections and to show how Ghana is leading the charge in the sub-region and how Ghana is standing tall in, on this continent in key areas, which I will not go into specificity, but soon we will have the Minister for Education, Dr. Ya Oseduchum, giving us evidence-based and, and, and a very credible presentation together with all the relevant team for us to know that we have come from somewhere. We have had massive strides in our education transformation. And what left to be done, we are still on course. So we thank you so much for coming to celebrate the great things this country has achieved on the front of education in the past medium term and as part of our commitment to ensuring that we raise a Ghana, a Ghana that is prosperous, a Ghana that has their people empowered, a Ghana that no child is left behind, a Ghana full of opportunity, a Ghana full of relevant skills. I thank you very much. Joining me here are students of Accra High School. And in your school, I know you quite well because we've been there to witness the launch of your STEM center. The minister is here for you, students. He's here to talk to us about the projects he's embarking on for you and then the future plans he has for you. What are you expecting to hear from the minister today? Okay, so all I expect is how the state of education is in Ghana is going and then whatever that is going on about STEM, how STEM will help education in Ghana. That's what I'm expecting. Thank you so much ladies and enjoy your day. I'm here with students of Achimota School. It is all about the minister today. He is here to deliver to us the address of the current state of the education system here in Ghana. Joining me here are students of Achimota, as I said earlier. Hi. And lady, very good. Very good. I like that. How about you? Fine, by God's grace. I want to start with you. How do you see the education system, especially you being high school? How is it treating you so far? How is the education system treating you so far? Um, for me, for my personal view, for the education system is very good. Especially the free education, which has really helped us, especially those who are poor, those who don't have that privilege. We really thank God that this system really came up. Thank you. My thoughts be here. Um, the minister is here to have ongoing project and then the future plans he has for the education system in Ghana. What are you expecting to hear from the minister today? The infrastructural system of education should be improved and very good. And the free SHS should continue. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister for Education. Reverend John in Team Fortal. <clears throat> and very soon we'll be having a spoken word performance by Mavlos Anor of Wesley Grammar School. Very soon she will be joining us. Mavlos will be joining us. But before Mavlos joins us, I'd like to introduce some dignitaries who are here with us this morning. The Deputy Minister for Works and Housing, Dr. Prince Hamid Amma, is here. Just show us uh, by wave, Dr. Prince Hamidama. Thank you very much for joining us. We also have David Pra, who's Deputy Director of the TVET Service, here with us. David, thank you very much. Dr. Fred Che Asamwa, Director Codvet, is also here. Uh, if we can just see you, thank you very much. We have Mrs. Mamley Andrews, who's Chief Director of the Ministry of Education. Dr. Eric Nkansa is Director General of the Ghana Education Service. Mrs. Mavis Asari Donko is Director General Administration.
Very Reverend Francis Kojo Innocent is General Manager of Methodist Schools and Vice President of Comet. He's here. Yes. Honorable Musa Issa is Regional Director, Ghana TV Service, Northern Region, Tamale. John Dazimensa is Director, Accreditation of GTEC. Frederick Addison is with the World Bank. Is he here? Okay, thank you. And Nana Eji Yabua of Sendlos is also here. Paul Grave Boachidankwa is at the Ministry of Information and Government Spokesperson on Governance and Security, representing the Sector Minister Fatima Abubakar. If you're here, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be acknowledging the presence of others who have joined us. But first, let's welcome a spoken word performance by Mavlos Ano of Wesley Grammar College. Let's welcome Mavlos Ano with a round of applause. Cocoa and other minerals. Free compulsory universal basic education was implemented in 2006, making primary education free and compulsory for all children aged 6 to 14. Young minds couldn't continue their second cycle education due to financial constraints. Dreams were shattered due to the high cost to attain knowledge. This increased illiteracy rate in the country. Out of pain and agony, Ghanaians wanted a change. Suddenly, a change took flight. Then came a savior with a free SHS policy. A savior who came with light in the midst of darkness. A savior who guaranteed the youth of a brighter future by implementing the free SHS policy. Setting up infrastructure and not forgetting STEM and robotics education in today's world of advanced modern technology. The millions of young people whose plight was how to further their education are now happy. Assuring them, even in the midst of hardship, that the future is bright. This is a man whose heart is pure and bold, dedicated in the quest to create holistic teaching and learning. Several reforms and initiatives have come on board. This includes, but not limited to the introduction of new curriculum in 2019, focusing on critical thinking, problem solving, and creativity. There is also massive effort to improve teacher training and professional development. With regards to infrastructure development, government has put in several initiatives to improve school infrastructure, including the construction of new schools and the renovation of existing ones. This is a man whose immense love for students is immeasurable. With the endless support of His Excellency Nana Adidankwa Ekufadu, all his dreams became a reality. And this man is none other than the erudite, the Honorable Dr. Yao Osei Ejuchun, our beloved Minister for Education. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome our dynamic and ever ambitious Minister for Education, the erudite, the Honorable Dr. Yao Osei Ejuchun. A round of applause, please. If you are at home, you are here at Accra International Conference Center for the Minister's Delivery on the State of Ghana's Education System. And I'm here with my ladies from Bipo. So hi. Hi, ladies. Hi. Oh, I like that. I like that. Good morning. How are you feeling? Good. Good. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. 
how is the environment treating you so far? I'm sure you've seen a lot going on. How is it treating you so far? So far, everything is very calm. Everything is nice. And we hope this program educates us a lot. And we get to know what is happening in the system. Yes. In school for a while now. Which form are you, by the way? Form three. Form three. Okay. Long enough. How are you seeing the education system? The education system is very good, and the whole free education has really helped a lot. It has brought a lot of people on board, and it has opened ways for many people to get the chance to also have a few of education and. Various innovations have been created through this whole free education, like STEM now being STEAM. It has brought art, it has involved the arts students as well, and not just limited it to the science and technical people. And yes, it's making the Ghana education very fulfilling. And teacher, I want to find out, she has explained to us how she feels about the education system. I want to find out for me as a teacher, from your perspective, how is the system treating you so far? And do you have any recommendations? Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Um, I also add up to buttress to her point regarding the STEM, which is now STEAM. Um, at first, you see, we had the notion that our education system is always about chew and poor, chew and poor. But now you can see a lot of students involving themselves in innovative programs. Even years back, the National Science and Math Quiz, it was only about question and answering. But of late, before they embark on the quiz, they do some technology activities by involving the student in a lot of science, mathematics, technology, and also robotics. So the, the state of our education, to my understanding and my perspective, is the fact that it has imbued a certain ideology in the student system whereby most students are now um, trying to involve themselves into things that will help them bring out some innovations and it has even helped a Ghanaian school to win international robotic competition so that's how I feel about the state of education now, yes. I call that improvement and thank you so much, sir. What are you expecting at the end of the day? I'm expecting to learn a lot of new things I've never heard of. I'm expecting to hear what the minister has for us and incorporate it to our lives and see that, yes, the Ghana education system will go a long way and become very better. Yes. Thank you so much, lady and sir. This is high school plaque if you don't go nowhere. Good morning to every one of you. Uh, deputy ministers, uh, my own deputy minister, Reverend Tim Fodjo, deputy minister for education and MP for Asun South. Deputy Minister for Works and Housing, uh, Dr. Ama, Prince Ama, eminent clergy, colleague members of parliament, head of UNESCO, vice chancellors, chief director of the Ministry of Education, NIME, NAME, Nananum, development partners, Big Win, MasterCard Foundation, head of schools and colleague teachers, parents, students, traditional authorities, faith-based organizations, community leaders, our teacher unions, association of private school representatives who are here, and our friends from the media, all other protocols duly observed. Uh, in Ghana, you have to be careful. So in case I didn't mention your name, all protocols have been observed. It's a great honor to be here this morning, to have the opportunity to tell the Nanado Dankwa Kufuado story in education transformation. Today, it's not a time for too much talk. I'll be doing an evidence-based communication because I know there are some who do not trust what the politicians say much. 
You've been waiting for action, and we'll provide the action. We'll provide the evidence to show you that here is a president who has gone beyond his manifesto commitment and has done more than he promised, a great accomplishment by all standards. We want to make sure that this nation's fortunes change for the better. Great strides have been made. We may not be where we want to be, but we are not where we used to be. And that evidence will be shown today. I'm grateful to the, the MC and moderator. Um, Nebato was going to be surprised by an introduction from the young lady uh, who is so eloquent and exudes so much confidence. It's a symbol of what is right in the education system. I also like the prayer. And be careful what you say, because when uh, you are not careful about what you say, your, your quotation may reflect in somebody's prayer. <laughs> uh, the headmistress of Laboni quoted something I said in her prayer. So that was profound. I'm grateful to all of you for coming here this morning. Our distinguished shareholders in education, it is with great honor that I join my Deputy Minister in welcoming you again to this event. Number of you have provided guidance, others critique. Either way, we believe it has made us do our job better. African Education Watch, under the distinguished leadership of my brother Kofi Asai, has always provided insights, sometimes in support of what we do, sometimes divergent, yet it all helps us to do our job better. My brother Kofi Asai, we've heard you about dropout prevention and what we need to do in that space. So you have always talked about dropout and how we need to stem the tide of dropout in our schools. And I'm glad that the Ghana Education Service have agreed to take on this task by appointing dropout prevention coordinators in all districts of the Ghana Education Service to ensure that when we see the early signs of dropout, the prevention coordinators will visit, visit families, visit communities to make sure students don't drop out before we start uh, 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 setting up GEOP to go and rescue them from their communities. We don't want children to drop out before we reintegrate them. So the dropout prevention coordinators are going to help do this job so that students don't drop out. The opportunity that has been presented to us as a nation in the area of free secondary education is an opportunity that should be extended to all. No child should drop out of school at the primary junior high school level. We will come and find you. We will work with you. We will work with your parents to make sure you stay in school to be part of the talent pool that this nation needs to transform its fortunes. We are in the fourth industrial revolution. The world as we know it is changing. Literacy, being literate, is a basic requirement. We cannot be counted among the countries with the highest learning poverty. The World Bank tells us that a number of countries in Africa are experiencing a, experiencing a crisis in education. In some countries, as many as 90% of the children aged 10 cannot read for understanding learning poverty. It is a scourge that a number of countries are facing. Ghana will flip the coin. Instead of 90% learning poverty, we want to make sure that 90% of our youth are proficient in reading and numeracy by age 10. That is why today I'm excited that we have begun communities of excellence. Nana Ansasa Sreku did us the honors a few months back when in his famous town of Manfe, we launched the Communities of Excellence program. Community of Excellence simply says that when you bring the community together, when you train the chiefs and the queen mothers and the assembly members to let them know of their responsibilities, they will partner government to ensure 
that 90% of our children, by the time they get to age 10, will read proficiently. And then, 90% minimum will move on to secondary. And beyond secondary, 90% will move on to employable um, opportunities or become employed or move on to tertiary. So this is what we call the 90-90-90 plan. And I, tell, I told Nana that Nana, if we're able to implement this very well in Manfi and other areas around the country, 10 to 20 years from now, when there's a funeral in your town, there will be cars everywhere. And they may not even find a place to park. Because the town, the village, will have prospered. We have to make sure that through the community of excellence, everybody comes together so that we can take advantage of the opportunity that has been extended to us by Nanado Danko Ekufuado's government. Free secondary education is something that we have all heard about. Let us look at what is going on across the country in terms of the enrollment. We have done a fantastic job in terms of the number of students who are enrolled in secondary schools in 2016, before the introduction of free secondary school, a little over 800,000 students were enrolled in senior high schools. Today, it's 1.4 million plus enrolled in our secondary schools. A great accomplishment. So as we prepare the youth through the community of excellence, they know that free senior high school is waiting for them. And this is the training that has been done in a number of communities who are part of the community of excellence. But we also should understand that okay. we also should understand that in spite of the opportunity for the youth to take advantage of the free senior high school, in some regions, we are having challenges. So when you hear of us talking about free compulsory universal secondary education, an enactment of an act to guide, protect free secondary education, we are talking about ensuring that no child had a choice to say, I will not go to secondary school, I will not go to technical school, I will not engage in a structured apprenticeship program and somehow on my, on my own I'm not 18 but I'm not about to participate in the education process there's emergence of a trend throughout the country northern region tops transition rate from junior high to high school 95% of the youth in the northern region of Ghana move from junior high to high school they have the highest score Followed by Savannah and Northeast, 94%. Then these two regions are followed closely by Upper East with 92% transition rate. Next in line is Upper West with 89%. We have all the five Northern region topping enrollment until then you see Bono East and Bruno region emerging and coming and with greater Accra Shanti following. Then you go to central region with enrollment in the 70s. Voter region with enrollment in the 70s. This trend should not be allowed to continue. Northern region 95%, Western is 81%, Bono is 86 Eastern is 79%, Central is 77 Greater Accra 87 Ashanti 87, Bono East 88, Upper West 89, Volta is 76, Western North 77, Upper East, I've already said, Ahaf is 82, Savannah North East, OT is 84%. We don't believe that when the government prov <coughs> provides the resources, a child should be able to say, I'm not going. So, Cabinet has approved proposal to enact a law that will say that there shall be free compulsory 
universal secondary education. Recently, I got the opportunity of launching a cyber security internet of things program at Wisconsin University. When we talk about the internet of things, it's affecting every facet of life in this fourth industrial revolution. You could speak to your room and the light will go off. You can speak to the room and the light will come on. The electricians who are doing this job cannot be the electricians of yesteryears who didn't know any aspect of programming. So the minimum qualification to participate in the fourth industrial revolution cannot be anything below secondary. So when you hear about the free secondary education, it's not a political cliche. It was another Dan Kwaku Fuadu's vision that in this fourth industrial revolution, every Ghanaian should be equipped to participate because of what is happening now. How do you program the light to come on when you talk to her? How do you program the light to go off when you talk to her if you don't have any coding experience, coding in your high schools? So when you see there's a curriculum change and that coding is going to be taught in the high schools, we are saying that this is what they need to survive in the fourth industrial revolution. By the way, the first industrial revolution was the revolution of the steam engine. Then from the steam engine, we came to electricity. It changed the world. And our last Ross first president, great strides were made. Industries were built in Ghana with the advent of electricity. Gave us the Akosombo Dam so that we'll get electricity. That was what was changing the world at the time. We did our bet. The industries did not survive the way we wanted it to survive. So yes, the second industrial revolution, we were not fully part of it as a nation, just like many other African countries. The third industrial revolution was the revolution of the computer. They were so big at the beginning, now it's on your watch. They are so small, and they are changing the world. But we are now in the fourth industrial revolution. That is the merger between the physical, electrical, and the biological. You can use your thumbprint to enter your home. It opens your door. Things are shifting. Artificial intelligence has emerged. Internet of things. Almost every major factory in the world is linked to the internet. It can be controlled remotely. Things are changing in this society. If we don't move up our numbers and enhance science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education, it's going to be very difficult for us to participate in this fourth industrial revolution. The World Economic Forum indicates that we are going to lose 85 million jobs as a result of the introduction of artificial intelligence. But it also goes on to say that the world is going to gain 97 million jobs. So it stands to reason that people should not worry. After all, more jobs are going to be created than the jobs that we are going to lose. But you know, when the secretarial jobs disappear, when meter reading jobs disappear, it's going to be replaced by programming jobs, analytics jobs. So the nation that educates its youth in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and is able to ensure the youth learn something about Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, about blockchain, all those technologies, and can create the software to drive industrialization are the nations that are going to have a positive job growth. Otherwise, if we are satisfied with two poor parts and forget, if we are satisfied with memorization and learning at the lowest level of the Bloom's taxonomy, what it means is that we are not going to become part of the fourth industrial revolution and our nation will be left behind. We Ghanaians should be the software developers of Africa. We should take the lead and take charge. Take advantage of opportunities that are coming. And that's why I'm super excited. That we have STEM centers where our youth are learning scratch, learning robotics, 
They are learning the kind of things that are being learned around the world. This is the Accra STEM Center at Accra High School. Students in the neighborhood come there to learn the new software that is available. They are mastering it at an early age and in no time. By the time they get to the high school, they will be ahead of the rest of the world. This is the present and the future of Ghana's education system. We are not waiting for anyone. The president's vision is clear that we need to live fraud, live fraud inequality, get ahead of the world, show the world the African child is capable of learning new skills and participating in the fourth industrial revolution. This is what you witness when you go to Accra STEM Center. A number of them have been built across the country and thank God uh, in September a number of schools will have their STEM centers operationalized. This is where Accra High is able to also get their students to do computer engineering and, and a whole lot of other computer related courses. They have 3D printers here, which is very rare. Somebody saw this on TV and called me and said, is that Ghana? I said, look at the faces of the children. They are Ghanaians. And he called me from America. And he said, the school that my child attends in America, we don't have this. And I said, yes, Ghana is making great strides. So, I can tell you that the evidence is here. And I can tell you that the evidence is compelling. We can and we should begin to appreciate what is happening. So let me take you back. This is secondary and also show something that has been done in the uh, primary and junior high school stage. Let's look at what has been happening in the, at the primary school and also at the kindergarten level. And then we'll take you all the way through high school. I'm going to be very brief in every aspect of it so that you can understand what has happened. I'm sure we're all familiar with buildings like this. Are we? Yeah, some of us may have sat in rooms like that, rectangular shaped buildings, painted brown and yellow, where the students wear brown and yellow uniforms. And some of you have run away from here. Uh, you said yes, you are right. But this uh, building that you see, thank God under the leadership of the president, when we move in the area that we are moving, it will be a thing of the past. We are moving from here at the junior high school level to spaces like this. And some of you were not willing to cry because I said, no, that's a drawing. It's an architectural rendering. Here they come again, the politicians, telling us what we want to hear. But let's move on to the real ones that we've built across the country. This is the new junior high school in the Republic of Ghana. In a town with seven junior high schools, when we build this, all the old buildings will be deserted and abandoned and we'll move all the students into a building like this. In a junior high school where we have biology, chemistry, and physics lab, a STEM lab, that is a 21st century junior high school. Because we cannot educate 21st century Ghanaian children in 19th century buildings and expect them to be proficient as other children in other places in the world. So if you look at it, you see the old building there. This is where children are moving out of Ajab in the Ashanti region into that space. And in September, when the school opens, there will be celebration. And by the way, they also have the flexibility at the community level to change their uniform and make it what they want. This is what happened in my constituency. When the government made available million dollars to every constituency, we took the million dollars and said we wanted a change in education infrastructure. This is the school that we built. It's called the Bosom 
STEM Academy. This is how the students dress. And this is how the other communities also will have the opportunity to say, we want our children to dress this way. This is a public school and not a private school. This is the science lab of a junior high school built with a million dollar per constituency. This is a music class of a public junior high school. Library of a public junior high school. You see how the teacher is seated with the smart board behind him. The students surrounding him, very comfortable. There's no cane in hand. The children are comfortable, and these children are going to perform. They are so comfortable, seated around their teacher. That is the future and the present of Ghana's education system. This is what we need to do more of. This was never promised in our manifesto, but I always say Mr. President is the president who go beyond his promise and do more than what we expect. When the opportunity came that we can do this, said, Minister, go ahead, do it for me. And now we have this. And more of these are going to be seen across the length and breadth of this country. So we move on to other interventions. So, you see, some of you are going to look at this and say, oh, okay, we saw Jabin, we saw this, and what about the remote villages and towns? What is happening there? Let us see a few of them. The before and after of some schools across the country, where with the help of the World Bank, the Arab Development Bank, changes are coming. This is a town called Jitokwe in South Tong, in the Volta region. This, is, this was their classroom. Looks familiar for some people. Now let's move on to what we have done the last four months. They are about to move into this, and I know there will be celebration in the town when school opens and the children walk into a facility like this. All across the country, many, many towns, sometimes we hear of the challenges there through the district director. All right, now let's move on. This is Asempa Neye. Asempa Neye. Translate the name. It makes you feel good. <laughs> good news is good, right? So <laughs> this is truly good news. So in a number of communities, we want to make sure that change come. And change come rapidly. We have to move the children from somehow, uh, sometimes it's not just 19th century, so 16th century. We have a half a mind. You look at what the building was and where it is now. Uh, you look at other schools. This was a demonstration school. Truly, demonstration. Now look at what the school is like. Azan was like this by the roadside. Show and tell. So Yellow Krobo passed by the roadside and this was Azan. This is it. Now, Azan Basic School, they have a WC and a number of places. This is a school called Nagode, and the town called Nagode, near Nyinehini. When school begins in September, this will be completed and that will be their school. All across the country, before and after, in Tefre Wasu, that was the classroom block before. Now you see, Atobiase, this was the classroom block. 
Now you see. So for all those who talk about the government has abandoned basic schools, not true. We have rather taken giant steps to make sure Apeusika, Breme, these are all new buildings across the country that has been done. And we'll continue to do more. We cannot leave out the rural child and expect only the urban children to benefit from government intervention. We need to tap into the talent pool of all Ghanaians so that we have the critical mass that can lead the transformation of our country. It is in our interest that every child benefit from quality education. But we know education goes beyond infrastructure. That's why I'm super excited that for the first time in our history, you need a bachelor's degree to teach, even in a kindergarten. The first group of students who graduated are going to start their teaching career soon as they prepare to go through the processing process. Uh, they recently applied. They selected the communities where they want to be and the application process is ongoing to put them in a place where they will be able to teach our children and ensure that we meet 21st century standards. In alignment with this, a number of schools at the junior high school level have received computers from the government. We are equipping junior high schools through the basic STEM initiative so that in communities we'll be able to ensure that they have a fully equipped lab uh, to ensure that they also can learn ICT and other skills that are required of them. We are going to be distributing robotic kits under the basic STEM program to a number of schools to ensure that all children will benefit from the government's intervention. The history of Ghana is replete with examples of various government innovations and interventions. And we want to make sure that we continue this strike. At the senior high school level, we have a number of modal STEM schools distributed across the country. Awaso STEM Senior High School, Accra High School STEM Center, Kwasa STEM High School in the Bono, uh, Bomosu Eastern Pasempe, and um, there's the Abomosu School uh, with the science labs that are there. Uh, it's operationalized. It's a full STEM high school. Awaso is one of the fascinating stories. A new school built uh, in Awaso. And look at the, uh, the environment. In case you hear somebody saying, Nanado Dankoku Father has not built a single school. I remember going through my vet in, in Parliament and I was asked, Name one school that your government has built. I said, He said one. He said, Yes, just name one. And I said, Bosom Tree Girls. Because you asked me for one. Yeah, Bosom Tree Girls are at the back there. And I said, If you say one, I'll give you one. But we've done so much. Your tax cities have been used to your benefit. Awaso, Pasempe, go and see the students doing experiments. This is not about two poor pass and forget. That era is over. This is about a place where children are innovating. Now, I'll show you examples of innovating by Ghanaian children. We are leading the world in STEM education. Now, I think it's something that should continue, and we truly show the world the African child is capable of innovating and creating something that other nations may not have dreamt of. So this is the learning environment Practical learning environment as espoused in the uh, <clears throat> Anamwa Mensa committee report that science teaching should be practical. Now it's happening. Anamwa Mensa committee, all the things that they talked about, it became a policy document. When I was in my PhD program, my professor, Dr. William Rada, said something profound. He said in Africa, the road to hell is paved with policy. He said, when you go to various African countries, they've written fine policies, but nobody intended to implement it. So from 2002, Anamwa Mensa Committee gazetted in 2004, and now the implementation is happening. <laughs> this the Accra High STEM Center, I think we've talked about it. So when you look at what has been done, 
Gamba, this is in Ashanti region. They are finishing up our uh, next academic year. It will be opened. You see, there are so many facilities here that in some jurisdictions like in America, this will be a community college and not a high school. In fact, Akrodie was so much advanced in terms of facilities, now it's going to be a investor of engineering and applied sciences. So all across the country, you're going to see facilities like this. This in keeping with the president's commitment that Ghanaian children should be educated to participate in the fourth industrial revolution. Now, let's move on. So, you're going to see all these facilities. We are also working on the Creative Arts High School uh, in Kumase, uh, which is going to get students from across the country interested in creative arts. That is going to be a school that is second to none, because this is where the next generation of creative artists will be trained for our country and for the world. Uh, to me, it's Ghana to the world. Our artists should be the best you can find anywhere in the world, and we're going to take a conscious effort to educate them so they can move on and showcase Ghana and bring critical resources back into our country. We have seen various interventions in education. The 1987 education reform gave us the junior high school. Now, the junior high school, unfortunately, as you can see from various uh, schools that I've shown you, find themselves in the old middle school buildings, run down, dilapidated, which in effect diminish our education system. We used to have seven years secondary. Then it became three. We jettisoned four and put the lower secondary, which is supposed to be secondary, by the way, in dilapidated structures. So when you hear of the free compulsory universal basic uh, secondary education and the secondary education bill, we want to rectify that. Junior high school cannot continue to be part of the basic education system. It should be part of the secondary education system, giving us an effective six-year secondary education. So the facilities that you see here, these are high school laboratories. Junior high schools are going to have same. So look at this. In a, across at the length and breadth of Ghana, new science labs have been built in existing schools and in new schools. Every girls, I see every girls, I see Okuapimai, I see Kumasi High School, I see Aflao Community Senior High School. Uh, these are all schools with new science lab uh, uh, fully equipped with the necessary gadgets so that they can do science experiments. So it's no longer a science program where we're expecting students to uh, memorize uh, some data for us. These are hunter mind girls. If you go and see the kind of uh, work the students are doing, it makes you know that things are changing in Ghana. This is a breed girls. Kumasi High School, Kumasi Anglican, St. Louis Senior High School. Uh, this is um, Aflao. So uh, in a number, Wesley girls also have uh, fully equipped science labs, six of them. If you don't have it in your old school, understand that it's coming. Every, some of you are saying it's coming. When? Don't worry. It will come. You help me break the eight and it comes. <laughs> this oh crap in mind. In a number of places I've been to the schools, so I can just look at the images and I, I remember uh, the school where the lab is. So these are the things that are happening across the length and breadth of Ghana. Post-COVID, our country is making investment in education. Not just at the secondary education level, at the primary level, we are making investment. 
at the junior high school level, we are making investment. I want to assure Ghanaians that the free senior high school will continue to be implemented the way it should be. Enrollment has increased. I think we've talked about that. And I'm sure it will continue to increase this year. With a 505, a thousand students enrolled in from one this academic year, the next academic year, we might see an increase. But one of the exciting things is that we have attained gender parity. In fact, there are more girls than boys. Uh, some guy didn't want to show that. So he said 50-50. If you look at the real numbers, there are more girls than boys in our high schools. Before free senior high school, for every 100 boys, you had 68 girls. Because parents were making some unfortunate decisions. Why? When they have limited resources, things are difficult for them. They choose between the boy and the girl, and then the boy gets selected. Then the girl can go and learn some trade, and the boy gets to go to secondary school. So when the barrier, cost barrier was removed, then all of a sudden, you have a situation where more girls are going to reflect the general population. So Ghana is one of the few countries in sub-Saharan Africa that have attained gender parity in secondary education. Now, you also hear other people talk about the free senior high school had diminished education outcomes. And sometimes when I hear that, I say, what kind of planet do they live on? Free senior high school has somehow destroyed education. Now that the poor gets the opportunity to go, everything is bad because the poor is in the room. We need to bring everybody on board. Let's look at the data and judge for ourselves. In 2015, 45.2% of our students got a credit score in English language, 45.2, 2015. Fast forward, 2023, 73.11% have A1 to C6. Let's go to 2015, integrated science, 28.7, 966.82. And look, mathematics, 32.4 is 62.23. Social study, 57.4, 76.76. And in case you are saying it's just one year, probably by accident. No. Look, from 2020, as the free senior high school students began to graduate, there's not a single year where any subject has been below 50%. All the ones that are red was when the subject was below 50%. After 2020, you don't see red. I congratulate the teachers of Ghana, headmasters for their hard work, and for their determination even through COVID. They came back, they worked hard, and their students did well. And somebody will say, why is that so? In case you have forgotten, once upon a time, before exams, students were kicked out of school to go and get their school fees before they would write the exam. There's a famous video, if it's here, we can watch it, maybe it's not here, of the headmaster, former headmaster of Aquinas, so angry and kicking out his students that they should get out of the school because he doesn't want to get into trouble with the public accounts committee that they would drag him before the public accounts committee that his students are owing school fees. He kicked them out. And he was happy that the children were out. He was obliged to do so and he did it. Now headmasters, caring headmasters as you are, you don't have to go through that uncomfortable moment. When you know that student that you are sending home is not going to get the money but you are forced to send the student home. When it's time for WASI registration, you have parents who cannot afford and therefore their children cannot write the exam. That was the Ghana now. Then, the Ghana now, children have the peace of mind to study. 
when school opens they come in their numbers because nobody is asking them to show receipt at the door of the uh, dining hall before they can enter students are not being driven away from boarding houses from dormitory blocks and therefore they have to concentrate on their studies we also made sure that books textbooks were distributed this is the outcome of your investment and you have to congratulate yourself for it that you made the right investment in the children of ghana and the outcomes are there two years ago two out of the three top performing students in west africa were from ghana two of them happened to be all the two two years ago happened to be from st james St. James Seminary and High School in Sunyane. This past year, 2023, three out of the three were from Ghana. Two of them, once again, were from St. James. And one happened to be from Laboni. So the woman with a powerful prayer, she said a prayer, <laughs> and she got one of the students. This is celebration. This is what we mean a return on investment that is commendable. Let's move on to the next slide. These are all the infrastructure that we have developed, and. Um, I think we don't have the time to go through every one of them, but this is across the length and breadth of Ghana, in Kwanta North District, a number of places where e-blocks are being completed. But let me bring you back to Accra, Greater Accra Region, where you can see example of transformation of public schools. Community schools that will start from kindergarten all the way to high school. If you happen to live in uh, near East Legon. You're going to see a community school, a public school that is just like or better than a public school you may see in any advanced country. Uh, those who are working on, yes, this is a STEM academy. When completed, looks like this. And um, with the interior decorations, you're going to see a new kind of a school. You're going to really, uh, when you enter the building, see the reception area that is being worked on now. Yes, this is the reception area. I think um, parents will want your children here. So imagine the first day sending your children to this school and you are not being asked to pay school fees. That is the Ghana you deserve. That is the Ghana we are creating. A Ghana where teachers and nurses and uh, judges and everyone will send their children to public schools a Ghana where the children of judges and children of laborers will sit in the same classroom and study together and form friendship. That is the kind of Ghana Nanado Dankwa Kufuado has laid the foundation for. That is the Ghana that Vice President Mohamedou Baumia wants to create. We have begun. And the story is not going to end here. Communities across the country are going to see buildings like this. In large towns and small towns, new school facilities will be built. Here you have five-story buildings on five-story building with elevator. Everything that you see in any school around the world is here. This is a school that I visit almost every other day. I want to make sure that this is done. And the legacy of Nanado Dan Koku Fuad and his vice president will be seen through the walls of this school as you enter the school you go inside and see 
the things that have been installed, bringing the children, the kitchen, the lab, the dining hall, all the things that needs to be in any school anywhere in the world this year, we will no longer continue to excuse poverty. We will rather be innovative and look at how we can create a better nation for all. Nation where the rich and the poor can be educated in quality learning environment. A nation where we can truly say there's freedom and justice. A nation where we continue to build on our strengths and minimize our weakness. Create a more cohesive nation. A nation where all of us will say that we are preparing ourselves for the future. Each his brother's keeper. Each his sister's keeper. And we are not stopping the story in the transformation as you see. But in the area of T-Vert, there has been a major transformation. Starting with the days where T-Vert in about seven ministries. Coming to now, where under the leadership of Honorable Yao Safumafu. All T-Vert institutions in various ministries were moved and brought to the Ministry of Education. A T-Vert service has been created, got its first Director General. Now you see Abetifi Technical Institute, with support from the Government of Austria. New equipment is here, and this is how the children are learning. This is the Ghana we want. And this is the Ghana we need to create. So when the children live here and they are employed in any industry, they have worked on those machines that they are going to be working on in industry. This is the TVET of the present and the future, not the TVET of yesteryears. This is what you see at Accra Applied Technology Center. A new TV, the students are here. Yes, I know. Next academic year, we're going to, for the first time, have an online school. Online high school. People who have been left behind can now enroll online, go to high school education, and also get their certificate. We need to make sure we carry everyone along. Through Sandlos, we're going to be launching next month our Ministry of Education TV station. So there will be 24 7 programming. They've even procured a van that can go to various locations and broadcast live for the country to see. Very soon, we'll be telling our own story. The story of transformation will be seen at the MOE TV station. Digitalization has also found space in education. And now you have high school students getting tablets. One tablet, one student. The distribution is on course. One student, one tablet is an innovation that has come and is moving on course. We were, I was with the vice president at Opokuari, where the smart classroom block was launched. And you can go and see the kind of tools and equipment that are there. And uh, it was a great day. And that is what you're going to see being replicated in our high schools across the country. The distribution of the tablets are ongoing. Uh, the images, these are the junior high schools. Move on to high school, please. These are junior high school classrooms with tablets. I think I mentioned it earlier, that they're also getting uh, tablets that they can use. This is Opokuare School in Kumase. This is how the classroom looks like. See, the instructor is teaching. The smart board is there. Every student is on their tablet. This is the present and the future of education in Ghana. A number of schools have received their devices. It's just amazing to see how the students are focused. The new curriculum that is being implemented in high schools, it's being trial tested and full implementation is coming. All the textbooks are going to be loaded onto the tablet. So they are all e-books. And it's going to be fascinating as we train teachers to teach in an e 
environment. Curriculum and assessment, NACA, have done some great things. The new curriculum is going to come out soon. On teacher professionalization, and we have uh, worked with various schools. GES have done a fantastic job establishing what is called professional learning communities. And I salute our teachers for investing time in their training and making sure they will equip themselves to lead the charge and transform our schools for now and the future. The story will not end without touching on tertiary education. In the tertiary education space, six universities are going to be open um, by the end of the year. Uh, some, the construction is completed and we have the bills in parliament and the parliamentary uh, select committee on education is going to be working on them so that we can get the act that will establish them. Beginning with University of Engineering and Applied Sciences at Akrodie in Nahafu. We have University of Engineering and Applied Science at Akrodie, University of Engineering and Agricultural Science at Bunso, University of Health, Agriculture and Life Science at Kintampo, University of Mampong in Ashanti region, and then we have the local governance and leadership university. It's also coming. There's sports, uh, university for sports development is also coming. So these are tertiary education institutions, and the whole goal is to make sure that we can increase the gross tertiary enrollment ratio of Ghana. When you look at the total number of students enrolled compared to the age bracket of 18 to 22, you're able to measure what is called the gross tertiary enrollment ratio. Case STU, same thing. Then my favorite one, pre-engineering. I tell the story of Kojo Mensa. Kojo Mensa is a young man who had a, uh, a dream. In that dream, he was talking to God. God was talking and said, Kojo, you are going to be the best engineer in the world. Kojo Mensa said, God, it's not possible. And God was saying, ah, I created you, Kojo. Why are you telling me it's not possible for you to become the best engineer in the world? He said, God, you know something? I'm a young man growing up in Ghana, and I'm doing visual arts in high school. Nobody will allow me to become an engineer. But what Kojo didn't know was that if he was to travel to America, he was the one that the universities would love to become an engineer because they were equipping him help train him with mathematics and fixes, and once he can pass his math and fixes courses, they want Kojo to be the engineer because the best engineers are the ones who can imagine and create. Now in Ghana, Kojo Mansa doesn't have to be in America in order for that to happen. A University of Mines and Technology, UMAT, and Pentecost University, they now allow students who did not do science but have creative energies to come in and then they allow them to take courses in mathematics and physics and chemistry for one year, intensive. And after they pass the end, uh, end line exams, they are allowed to pursue engineering. <clears throat> Nothing can stop a determined person from becoming who he really wants to be. A number of times our youth don't get adequate counseling. They follow their friends and say science is so hard. Then they go into home economics. They go into visual. They do other things. Then they, when they want to decide to change, we, the adults, tell them that no, 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 you will never be able to change. If you wanted to do engineering, why didn't you do science? You are coming here to tell us that you did home economics and you want to be an engineer. We project our inabilities onto the child who is determined. Instead of saying, you have to do physics, can you? It's so, okay, I can do it. Because you see, if you do science for three years because of the other core subject, somebody who comes and do science intensive one year for just three subjects has the same level of content as the person who did it for three years together with all the other courses. Because when they come, they are not doing the core subjects any longer. They are just focusing on the fixes, the chemistry, and the math. And therefore, when they pass the exam, just like anybody else, they should be able to do engineering 
and doing so well. I'm glad to hear that at UMAT, the vice chancellor tells me the student who came through pre-engineering in most of the courses are doing better than those who did science. These are determined students. Some of them went to schools where they could not do science, like myself. When I went to Jatia Pramson Senior High School, there was no science courses there. You only did biology or general or Greek. And there are still some schools in that situation, which we are changing. But if that student wants to be an engineer, went to a school where he didn't get the opportunity, if you allow them, he will prove you wrong. And these young men and women are proving us wrong. In fact, the good news is that in these classes, you almost have gender parity. In your regular engineering course, you are not going to have as many young women that you have in this pre-engineering program. We are grateful to BOST for giving us the opportunity to sponsor the number of students for the pre-engineering. And it's working. And I'm grateful that we could do that with the universities. So GTEC, working with the universities, uh, have done a fantastic job enabling these students who otherwise wouldn't have found themselves in engineering classrooms to go there, to become software engineers, to become mechanical engineers, to become computer engineers, and do so many things for our society. The visual artist, by the way, is my favorite kind of person. Engineering came from art. But now the person who can draw cannot be an engineer. The most creative minds we have in the country are the visual artists. About 70,000 of them graduate from our high schools every year. Some universities will say, you cannot even come here and do any other subject unless you want to do art. We cannot leave these creative minds behind. We need to encourage them. And where there's a deficiency, we need to make sure we provide them the support so that they can move into the mainstream of society. If they find value in what they are doing in art, that is great. They can also continue because they felt that holds great promise. But if they want to change, we should give them the opportunity uh, to change. Critical thinking is an aspect that we are all concerned about. We are concerned about a situation where it's about memorization. That kind of education system will not change our fortunes as a nation. Even all, if our children go to school, I will give them all the opportunity and the exams is just testing them at the remember, understand and apply level. It's not going to be. The new BEC is shifting the paradigm. If you're a parent, maybe your children may have told you the exams was hard. It was intentional. 40% of the questions were from level 4, 5, and 6. This is an education. It's called the New Bloom Taxonomy. Any teacher who is teaching has to use this to guide in writing their lesson plans. And if you don't use this, you may use what is called Webb's Depth of Knowledge. In each one of them, you have to look at how do you get the children to think critically. If all your questions are talking about define, list, repeat, state, the lowest level of learning. That is not the kind of place we want to be in order to create the critical minds to change Ghana. If you just say classify, describe, discuss, report, low level. If you are saying use the information to demonstrate application, mm -mm, you are not there yet. It is when you move up and say produce new or original work, assemble, construct, conjecture, develop. For example, if you are teaching pollution, if you ask the student to create a city without pollution, they are creating. In countries that have transformed their fortunes, that is the level where they are challenging the student to perform. They are challenging the student to justify a stand, to draw connections among ideas. Your exams will have 60% of that and 40% of the low level. That is how you change your country. So we are very much interested in the exam that is being set by WAEC. We are not going to allow a situation where the tail is wagging the dog. If the country wants to create critical minds, our examination system cannot be the examination system 
that enable students to memorize and pass. That era is over. So our teachers are going to then be encouraged to teach differently. Allow the student to be comfortable in your environment. Set the rules so that they cannot be misbehave. But allow them to participate in their teaching and learning. We cannot tame our children and get them to be so quiet in our presence. Also, oh, that child is so good. Oh, when he comes to my class, if you don't ask her to talk, she, she will not talk. She's so quiet. In this environment, gifted and talented students are the most miserable. Research have shown that between 6 to 10 percent of the population have, are gifted or they are talented. The gifted are the ones who are so smart and sharp, they'll get 100 percent of their exams. You teach them once and they get everything. They are gifted. If we do not introduce gifted and talented education in Ghana, those children become miserable because they don't conform to the norm. They don't easily take notes from the teacher. Their mind works differently. A number of times they are more likely to drop out because they can't keep up with the drudgery in the classroom. So one of the things that we are working on now that is going to cabinet for approval is the introduction of gifted and talented education in Ghana. Those individuals with gifts should be provided an environment where they will blossom. South Korea has done it, and the results are there for all to see. America has done it for years, and the result is there for you to see. When you pick those talented ones, the ones who can dance, the ones who can lead, the ones who can create some equipment that nobody has even taught them to do, if you put them together with the, those who are super sharp in one environment and you nurture and grow them, they are the ones who change the course of history of your country. A number of times I receive something on WhatsApp that said, look at these students. Can we find him a technical school? Because he's so good. He has even built a prajia. He has built something. And I'm saying to myself, yes, the technical school is good. But if you don't put that child in a gifted environment, and talented environment, he will get bored at the technical school. Because the technical school, we're going to teach to the average. Enhance teaching and learning for gifted and talented students is something that will shift the paradigm for us as a nation. And that is going to be one of the last innovations that now the Danko Kufuado is going to bring to the Ghanaian education system. So, you know, I'm, I'm a teacher and, and um, politician. In both professions, if you don't like to talk, you, you lose your job. So I always remind myself, when my time is up, I see it. I don't even have to look at the MC. I, I get a signal from within that the time is up. And we'll wrap up with my favorite kindergarten in Ghana, Adome Kwabinya. Look at the children. <laughs> we are building a number of them like this. This ICT empowered, built by BSW, of course paid for by the government, it's an Israeli company. And if you go to Dome Kwabinya, and it's free, this is free. And look at that. This is the Ghana you want. A working parent can drop off your children early morning and know that they are in safe hands and they are being taught 21st century way. And unless you want to donate to the school, they won't ask you to pay anything. I believe middle class should have a break. After you pay your taxes, we, the government, should provide you quality learning environment so that you don't spend. 
about 30% of your income in paying school fees. Your taxes should mean something to you. And this is a clear demonstration of what we are telling Ghanaians that we are capable of doing. That will create this positive, creative learning environment for your children. And you can come here knowing that the taxes that you paid is working for you. This is the new paradigm. I will end with just one thing. An innovation by the girls of Afia Kubi Ampim, a senior high school in Asante region. What they did have shocked the world. Yeah, the KJ people don't want to leave. <laughs> When we talk innovation, we talk girls who are doing some marvelous things. From Sewa and Yakon, um, you go to Mount Methodist girls. Now you go to Efiakubi. It's a fascinating story. I'm not sure if they are in the audience today. I invited them, but maybe they couldn't make it. This is a girl's school in Ashanti region that is doing some marvelous things. I'll move on. To, um, yeah, they have, uh, in fact, a tarmac. And they call this the Ukraine field. And I say, Ukraine field? You want the Russians to come after you? <laughs> so this is their drone. And uh, it's fascinating. I, we showed this in France. And the world club for Ghana. So you see, it's gone. You see, it didn't fall down. They just fast tracked it so that it will land shortly. Otherwise, it took about 15 minutes and they came back to land. The students who did this. A number of them are not science students. One geography student, a young lady, told me, the minister, <laughs> they are running away. <laughs> See, it came back to land. This is the new Ghana. <clears throat> the young lady told me a fascina <clears throat> fascinating story. He said, minister, I'm doing geography. And I'm using longitudes and latitudes to program the drone so that it will find its direction back to where we sent it from. Longitudes and latitudes. Geography is helping. These young ladies do the impossible. I tell you this. Our nation education system is stronger and better now we came to find it seven years ago. There are so many images. Let me conclude. It's better than we came to find it. It's better because the president gave us the free hand to innovate and transform the education space. I was first a deputy minister, and the minister in charge of the ministry at the time was Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe. I work under him. I got my chance and became the minister. I continue the work that the president did during the first uh, uh, term. Move on to the second term. Bring me back to the story of how he met me in America. And he asked me, whilst I was developing schools there, building schools in Los Angeles, with about 200 workers that I paid every month in charter schools. These are public private schools. And the government paid for every student who came to my school. He asked me, would you come back to Ghana and help me change the education system? Today I feel fulfilled that I left what I was doing there. Three schools in Los Angeles and they are still functioning. I left and came because I saw sincerity in his voice when he told me, he was not president then, he told me I want to introduce free secondary education and Americans were the first to do free secondary education. Can you bring your expertise back to Ghana to help me do it? I came because I grew, I had grown up in an environment where I was just fortunate to go to secondary school. My dad, a cocoa farmer, I won't say he was poor, but he had a cash flow problem. It was September. Cocoa had not been harvested and dried yet. 
no money to pay 40 cities. Things were very difficult. My younger brother had an idea. He could sell a pig that he had, that had been given to him by my uncles. He was taking care of their piggery. He said, my brother, I can't see you sitting at home. I'm selling this pig so that you can go. We sold the pig, we got 42 cities. I was able to pay my deposit at Jatse Pramsu Senior High School. And I moved into secondary school so super excited. Through this intervention by my brother, I find myself subsequently in the United States of America, sponsored by that same brother, and developed schools in America. So when the president asked me, would you consider coming back, my mind went back to the opportunity I got from my brother, which others did not get. And I said to myself, if this man becomes president and he wants every child to get the opportunity that I got from my brother, why don't I go back? And that is why I came back to Ghana. I've come to meet a grateful nation at the airport, in many other public places. People come to me and say, thank you for your service to Ghana. That is worth more than anything I can get from my job. It's worth more than anything when a politician walking on the streets are accosted by an honorary Ghanaian and say, we thank you for your service to Ghana. Ghanaians, as you watch this, I'm grateful to every one of you. I'm grateful for your support. I'm grateful for your prayers. You've made me feel appreciated in this country. I have no regrets coming back to Ghana because I've come to a grateful nation. Come to a place where under the vision of Nanado Danko Kufuad, we can truly change the course of history of our nation. To the President of the Republic, I'm eternally grateful. You gave me a chance. And I hope I have not disappointed you. I've taken directions from you. I've done what is expected. And I believe history will judge you kindly. That you are a president who cared for the people of your nation. And you did your very best to turn around the fortunes of your nation. You've given me uh, some workaholic uh, deputy ministers. Um, this young man... <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> Reverend Tim Fodjo and now another one, uh, Dr. Kinsley Nyakon, they all work hard. They crisscross the nation when they are events. On a short notice, you call them and they are running from one place to the other, supporting me so that the dream of the president will become a reality. To the vice president who has been so supportive, helpful to me, helpful to my cause, and helpful to the cause of the nation, I'll forever be grateful. Chief Director, Head of agencies, every one of you have done a fantastic job. Headmasters, some of you call me out of the blue. Say, Minister, we are checking on you. You make me feel so uh, good that you have headmasters who care about you. Education committee, chairman, ranking, members of the committee, and all the work that you do every single day to support our ministry school. Traditional leaders um, who always will respond to our call and come and support us. To every one of you watching, I want you to know that a new Ghana has been established. We are moving on. Change has begun. Change will continue. We're going to get into a nation where there will be opportunity for all, a robust middle class, going through universities, making sure you do relevant courses, helping you to secure jobs, innovating ourselves out of poverty. This, I hope, will be the Ghanaian story in the years ahead. God bless us all. We can definitely do better. Thank you, thank you very, very much. Please be seated. I, I just asked the Education Minister, the Minister for Education, to stand here a little bit. Uh, you know, he's a teacher, and teachers are used to standing. 
I was just asking myself, there's a lot that has been done, but much hasn't been said about it. Um, for those of us who are tagged as critics of free SHS, one of the things we have always said about education in this country over the last eight years, but particularly over the last four years, is the focus on STEM. And I have consistently said that if we had done this long ago, we probably would have been seeing much more than we're seeing now. So thank you very, very much, uh, Dr. Yawase Duchum. Um, it's good that you're focusing on STEM. It's good that you want us to lead when it comes to the fourth industrial revolution. It's also important that even at the Africa Union level, you've been recognized and be made to champion education on a continent level. But um, before you resume your seat, like we say in Ghana, I'm told that the education parrot, uh, they say they have a citation for you. Yes, today is a day of lots of surprises. But you know, this couldn't have been possible without your team. So don't blame me. Members of your team, oh good, they've done this. So, um, yes, they hid it from you. Let's do the presentation. Where do we stand? I think we can stand here and have the presentation done to the Minister for Education. Yes. And so the patron will join. I think he may have to say a word or two as they present it to the Minister of Education. Let me see what's uh, written there. Okay. This says, in recognition, uh, recognizing his transformative contributions to Ghana's education sector and STEM advancement as Education Minister. His visionary leadership has shifted Ghana's educational paradigm to emphasize creativity, innovation, and critical thinking, aligning with global standards and positioning Ghana as a leader in educational innovation across Africa. We proudly confer upon Honorable Dr. Yao Osei Duchum the title of STEM Innovator, Minister of Africa. Thank you, uh, Mr. MC, and we don't have words to, you know, go ahead and explain the fantastic job that our minister has done. I just came back from London, and he made mention of some of the things that people cannot believe. I've taught in England for 25 years, and I can confirm wholeheartedly that what we're seeing here in Ghana is a manifestation of leadership. So, Mr. Honorable Vice President, Dr. Abitu, we appreciate all the efforts that you put in in transforming education in Ghana. A lot of people ask me in England, what is happening in Ghana? Some of the schools they see is even beautiful than the ones that we see in the UK. So we just want to say we appreciate all the efforts that you put in in changing education in Ghana. We say thank you very much in all your endeavors and we hope that the future and the foundation that you've laid for us will bring about the 21st century students that we want to see in our next generation. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anything you'd like to say? Honorable Yawase Duchu. All right. Thank you. Now he has given me permission to say. <laughs> Thank you so much, MC. I'm so grateful. Let's give him another round of applause. Thank you very, very much. Dr. Yao Osei Duchu, Minister for Education and Member of Parliament for Bosumchi. Great. So, before the vote of thanks, let me acknowledge the presence of uh, uh, Professor Yaira, who is Director of NACA. If you're here, Professor, just show us. Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Christina Daipoku is Executive Director of the National Teaching Council. Uh, 
If it's here, yes. Um, Professor Samuel Atintono is president of Minkoff. If, Prinkoff, I beg your pardon, if you're here. Uh, principals of the College of Education, if you're here. And Matthew Owusu is Deputy Director General Naka, if he's here. Engineer Peter Intribuesiako is Deputy Director of CTVET, if you're here. Lawrence Sapong is Deputy Registrar of the National Teaching Council. Nana Rekwampim is Board Chair of CTVET. And Dr. James Owusu, Leading Educational Consultancy in the UK, if you're here. We'd also like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Nana and Sansa Siraku III, Manfihini and Chidomhini of Equiapim. Thank you very much, Nana, for joining us. Nadinsu Efriye III, Ghana Royal Click Club, is also here with us. Maidan Konama, a secretary to the Implementation Committee, Tepa College of Education. Rexy Mensa is head of Implementation Committee of Tepa College of Education. And Nana Amwating Tufo is Ankobi Ahini of Tepa Traditional Council. Thank you very much, Nana, for being here. And Nana Okufu Ousu Ansa is Uduma Sehine of Tepa, all joining us. We also finally would like to acknowledge the presence of Mrs. Mausi Nudeko Awuti, who is Director General of the TVET Service. Uh, Bright Apia is with the Child Rights International. And Dr. Hega Hildampedu, who is uh, Inspector General Nasia, also here with us. Thanks to all of you for joining us. We we'll now invite Pa Ramzi Yeshen, who is head boy of Presec, to give us the vote of thanks. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and valued partners in education, on behalf of the Ministry of Education and our hardworking Minister of Education, Dr. Yao Se Duchun, I extend our heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for gracing this momentous occasion with your presence. Today, we gather at the Accra International Conference Center to celebrate remarkable strides made in Ghana's education sector and to underscore the unwavering commitment to all stakeholders to pursue excellence in learning. As, I, as a student, I have personally witnessed significant progress in various areas in my school, including my family not having to pay school fees to acquire such beautiful and wonderful education, the ability to engage in 21st robotics and STEM education, and I am more engaged in class activities due to the interactive approaches used by my teachers. We are deeply honored to have such a diverse and influential gathering of individuals representing the very fabric of our educational landscape from our esteemed members of parliament who champion education policy, policy sorry, and resource allocation to the dedicated heads of schools. We say thank you for your tirelessless efforts in nurturing students to become future leaders. We extend our deepest appreciation to the teacher unions and the heads who tirelessly ensure quality and effectiveness in our teaching force, your unwavering commitment to professional development and advocacy for improved working conditions for educators is a testament of dedication and hard work into improving our sector of education. To the parents, guardians and teachers, traditional authorities who provide the foundation for our education of our children's journey. We express our heartfelt gratitude for your unwavering support and encouragement, your involvement in children's learning and your active participation in school's activity are invaluable in creating a nurturing and supportive environment for their development. Industry players, development partners, civil society organizations and faith-based organizations, your invaluable contributions to the education sector are deeply appreciated. From providing resources and job opportunities to advocating for policies that promote inclusive, inclusi sorry, inclusivity and equity, your diverse perspectives and practical support enrich the learning experience for our youth. We are proud of the progress achieved but to recognize that there is still much work to be done. We must continue to strive for inclusivity, equity, and equality in education, ensuring that every Ghanaian child has the opportunity to reach their full potential. We are eternally grateful to all those who have contributed to the success of this event. 
not, not understating that our hardworking organizers and volunteers, your tireless efforts and unwavering dedication have ensured a smooth and yet another experience for all participants present. As we conclude, let us remain inspired by the spirit of collaboration and shared responsibility. Let us continue to work together, drawing upon our diverse perspectives and collective expertise to create an education system that empowers every Ghanaian child to become a successful and contributing member of society. Thank you all very much for your unwavering commitment to education and making this yet another success. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, pa Ramzi Eshen for that vote of thanks. I like, I mean, I like the young ones when they are very articulate and they make all the points. Let's give another round of applause, you know. It means that when we are away, we can leave the country for very great men. That's very important. But let me also acknowledge the presence of uh, Edmund Mukala, who is the head of the UNESCO office and representative to Ghana. And my friends from the media who are also here. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, you know, morning show host uh, in Accra and those from Kumasi who have all made time to be here. I see you are seated in there, but uh, the lights are on me, so I can't recognize you and mention your names. But please bear with me. Uh, you can just show us by wave if you're here. Uh, we acknowledge your presence that, uh, you know, uh, you joined us here. Sure. I'm told that many of you came here. So it means we're getting to the end of the program now. We can ha now have another student. Um, give us the closing prayer, this time from Ebri Girls, Esla Hagan. Let's welcome Esla Hagan. I'm grateful for the opportunity. May we all rise as we take the closing prayer. Shall we close our eyes? <laughs> Indeed, Lord, we are grateful. Your grace is sufficient for us. When we began this program, we asked for your presence, and Lord, you have not failed in giving us so. Lord, we want to say thank you for such a wonderful program and for such another wonderful day, Lord. Lord, I pray that you bless our leaders and you make all their dreams and aspirations come to fruition, for they have great plans for us. I also pray that whatever we have heard today will reach the homes of every single Ghanaian, so that they may appreciate the effort of our leaders and support it more. Lord, I pray that you be with our country, and you continue to help us to become greater and stronger. Amen. Amen. Thank you very, very much, Esla Hagan. So that brings us to the end of uh, the state of education in Ghana. The Minister, Minister for Education would um, depart first and then the rest of us would follow. My name is Winston Amoa and I was in charge of this ceremony. Have a lovely day. <laughs>